Welcome to Tal Capes. I'm Cody Nestor, and he's the Dr. Disrespect of the podcast world, Todd Hill. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you even know who Dr. Disrespect is, Todd? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. That's probably for the best. Okay. You can look it up in your own time. I'll do it. I'll See do if it. that's a compliment or a potential slight I'm, against I'm you. I'm thinking my track record is some kind of slight. It's probably a slight, <laughs> yeah. Uh, today, we're catching up on Star Wars, the Agolite episodes four through six. Of uh, course, spoilers are ahead. Todd, let me start uh, by saying this. We haven't been here in a while. We've been vacationing. We have, yeah. You've been vacationing. So, yeah, it's been a while since we've been here, so it might be a little rough to get yeah. started. For a little rusty, folks, bear with us. Exactly, yeah. We might go on vacation again next week. <laughs> or <knows>? permanently. Permanent <laughs> vacation, exactly. <laughs> uh, let me start by saying this, Todd. Coming back to the Acolyte, we're a little bit behind. We're catching up for uh, the 4 through 6 today. We're going to do another video in a minute at about 7. Mm -hmm. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this show with a passion. Right. Uh, it was just when we first started it, it was like whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't have enough care to be angry about it. Now so you like, have acquired a personal axe to grind. Yeah, just I mean, like <laughs> we started it, so we're finishing it. Would I mm -hmm. even like? Would I even have finished this if we hadn't have started it and like made a couple episodes about it? No, like, right. I would have just let this go and just chalked it up as like trash Star Wars that we've gotten for the last okay. ten years, yeah. but. Now we're into it, and it's making me hate it because I've, I've, I've watched it, and then the more I watch it, the more I hate it, and the more dumb it is, and the worse it seems to get. It, there's a little, little dip, like a little dip in quality in terms of the upswing of quality in one episode, maybe, mm -hmm. yeah, that we'll talk about. But other than that, it does not redeem it whatsoever, okay, at all. But so I just want to start by saying I hate this. I kind of see. Where I don't. I see where you're coming I from. I hate it here. <laughs> I hate it here. So, Ty, what did you think the story was in episode four? Uh, May, ready to call it quits? Osha as well? What's going on here? Yeah, ready to walk away. At least everything's redeemed by an awesome showdown between the Jedi away team and May and the Jedi Wookiee. Or was it? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome yeah, we, to episode four. We've been waiting for that. Uh, we've been promised this this big confrontation between May and the Jedi. The Wookiee Jedi, Kelnaka, who's kind of yeah. like... Uh, exiled himself from Kofar, or I see. I thought he was exiled. In this, it makes it seems like he was stationed there. Yeah, Do you remember that? Like it's been again full disclosure. It's been a, while. It's been a week <laughs> since we watched this. We we're going to record this episode last week, so we might be a little fuzzy on four, five, and six. But from what I remember. I thought he was like exiled there because after thought. the shit at the lesbian witch coven, he's like, you know, fuck this, I'm out, mm -hmm. and I'm just, you know, being a hermit on this planet. But it seems like the Jedi actually stationed him there, which doesn't make any sense. But whatever, whatever. But yeah, we, we've been we've been anticipating this big showdown between May and Kelnaka. You know, she's gonna go up to him and do her little stupid little cringe like, "Strike me with all your might, right. Mr. Wookie." Don't doesn't happen. Never get it. He does. He yeah. dies off screen. Off screen. He dies off screen. So May, yeah. yeah, May and uh, the uh, Kumir is his name. Asian exactly. Ezra Miller, Apothary guy. Yeah, Asian Apothary. Ezra. Yeah, <laughs> Asian Ezra Miller. Okay, they're on Kofar. They're going through the, the the jungle, and you're you're still at this point. We said from the beginning. Everyone said from the beginning, not us. This guy's the master, right? And you see, like he's just making his way through the jungle, no problems, easy peasy. She's all tired and winded. He's got these big baggy clothes on because we'll we'll come to see his physique a little bit later, Todd. Right. That's under this, but yeah, if you maybe if you, more than we wanted to. Yeah, yeah, a lot more. <laughs> than we wanted to in one episode but yeah yeah any any he's doing like a, he's doing like a clark kent he's like bumbling around knocking into suitcases right like he, he, he's doing a, a clark kent he's to try pulling to like, the old dual identity on us here. yeah exactly to try to like throw off uh the audience but again we're we're not buying it. anybody that's buying it that quamir was not the master is i'm sorry it's you're a little dim. Yeah, you, you, you might be a little dim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just some things in this episode. I know we're way late on the controversy of this, or if it is a controversy to call it. We get an appearance of Ki-Adi Mundi, Todd. Oh, yeah. Your favorite. Oh, yeah. Your favorite Jedi. I've heard you say many times. It has got to be him, Mr. Mundi. From his appearances in the <laughs> uh, the prequel trilogy. He's around. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe he's a liar. We get young Mundi 
because he's uh, he said uh, the controversy is apparently in there the 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 prequel trilogy. He said you know the Sith haven't been seen for millennia, and now what you'll see later on in these episodes is that maybe there is a Sith around, mm-hmm. and does this all get covered up somehow? Is he not really a Sith? All that stuff still there to be seen. So maybe he's a liar. Maybe he's a trash. You know, whatever race he is, you know, conehead or whatever. Right, right. <laughs> uh, there was a controversy because after this episode came out, Wikipedia changed his birthday to match oh. up with the show, apparently, and people were up in arms about that. Is that something you care about, Todd? I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's whatever. I mean, I I have no opinion on the fucking Ki Adimundi's fucking birthday. <laughs> you could have told me it was yesterday, and like his his he's he's got like a life of a fly. He's like born and dies in one day. Yeah, and I'd have been fine. I'd with it. I'd have been fine with it. I don't. I really don't care. <laughs> uh, one one positive positive aspect that I'll give this this episode in itself is that I mean they spent a lot of money 180 plus million right three the equivalent of three Revenge of the Sith Todd wow. together yeah where is that money gone where is it I don't see it on screen bezeled <laughs> it must have been laundered or embezzled uh there is a good a decent use of actual locations and that yeah. is what I will give it is that it doesn't seem like it was all created on the volume or in a CGI space it seems like they did take some people to some to some Exotic actual locales, actual yeah. locations so I do appreciate that I guess yeah. that's how you spent some of the money but the rest of it I don't. I don't see where I don't see the money on screen. The here, books not. ain't adding up some way. Yeah, as you said, they send the away team. They send the uh, they send Soul. The Jedi Council sends well, not the Council, but uh, Green Greenhead bitch, whatever her name yeah. is. Yeah, Ver- Vernestra. Vernestra sends a uh, Soul Yord and a bunch of red shirts down to Kofar <laughs> that you know are just there to just be to feed the mich- the meat grinder. You know that's <laughs> what they're going to be there for, Todd. They have no personality. <laughs> they're barely shown. There's I think there's like eight of them. Cannon fodder. Yeah, I think there's like eight of them total. And uh, what is Saul's uh, uh, Padawan's name? Jackie? Jackie? Jackie, <laughs> J- Jackie Harry? <laughs> Jackie from Jackie. Roseanne? <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> yeah, Jackie. Okay. Jackie, and then you've got Yord uh, yes. as well. He's around, you know, that great, you know, really drawn out, like, Evolved character Yord, <laughs> yeah, that he's like very, very depthful character of Yord that we got, Todd. The guy's a wooden chair. <laughs> he basically, he might as well be a fucking wooden chair. Uh, we also get uh, uh, Basil, Basil the, the space gopher. Oh lord, Basil the space gopher. Space gopher. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, they need a way to track. I guess May around on the planet, so they bring Basil the Space Gopher to basically be their indentured servant to uh, to smell around for her. Or they needed something to be a plushie they could mark off at seventy five percent at Christmas time at the Disney stores. <laughs> exactly. I, either way, either way, yeah. <laughs> if Pip the droid wasn't selling too good because he's featured or it is featured pretty prominently yeah. here, yeah. Now we've got another plushie to sell that we can mark off at Christmas time for the kids. Um, as we mentioned before, Kanaka. Our big our Wookiee showdown. We're 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 not giving that. We're denied at all. it. We're denied that completely. Uh, again, Quamir's doing his 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 uh his kind of Clark Kent stuff. What's May's turn here, Todd? What does May decide on here? She kind of decides, kind of almost midstream here. Like you know, she's found out her sister's still alive. You know, I, she just don't see the point in carrying on with this revenge thing. She's just kind of over it. Yeah, just at a drop of a but hat. She almost. Went, she went all the way to Kofar. She's done all this. She's killed yeah. two Jedi's. One. One physically killed, the other led him to kill himself. You're two deaths in. You're two deaths in. You're pretty deep into this, but yeah. she decides on a whim, it seems, mm-hmm. it, with a with a stroke of a key or a swipe of a pen mm-hmm. to like completely change her characterization. Yeah. And she's just like, yeah, I'm kind of over this, Cormier. You know, I ain't feeling this. Tell no the more. master to stick it up his ass. <laughs> He can, I'm done. He, he can kill a Jedi with uh, without a weapon if he wants to. Tell him old May's calling to quit. Yeah, so she just decides to quit, and uh, we see kind of at the end of the show the uh, this episode the, the the Jedi away team they've kind of arrived at Kelnaka's crib. May's around. Uh, Osha's around. She she comes up and who 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 arrives on the scene behind Osha? Dog? Was it the Dark Master? It's the Master. Smilo Ren. <laughs> as he's referred to. Is that to. supposed to be Teeth, I'm guessing? Yeah. Is that a real Smilo okay. Ren. Yeah, that's, how, that's his <laughs> internet name, yes. Uh, it's Smilo Ren. So we see him kind of arriving, and he just 
Force flicks OSHA away. Yeah. And that's kind of how we end episode four. I guess this is more of a staging episode than anything else. Yeah, it almost feels like it could have been maybe just tacked on a part of another episode, honestly. Yeah. There's not a lot of meat on the bone here. Yeah, because episode <laughs> three, that's where we're coming off our 16 years ago flashback right. cock tease. Mm-hmm. Which, boy, we're coming back to that. We're we're bearing down the road to that <laughs> um, yet again. But, yeah, so this just is kind of just a staging episode to get people in place, to get Ocean in place, to get May in place, to get her... Her, I guess some kind of turn they're doing between Osha and May, like rotating their characters in a way. Which, which why? We'll, yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> a little bit going forward. But this is really a staging episode. But I mean, don't get me wrong; it's still bad. It's still it still sucks. Yeah. Like there's still a bunch of stuff that doesn't work here. There's still it's just it's just me it at best. Yeah. Anyone, if you could look at this episode, and if you could just look at this episode as it's just as itself and and a bottle it, it's just a me it episode at best. Definitely. It's, it's mediocre, bad me it, whatever you want to call it. So yeah. it's really just staging for what's going to come in five and six and what we get from from there on. So Todd, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Give us your review score and your final thoughts for episode four. Uh for me, I think I'm gonna have to stick with a four here. This is as you kind of we've mentioned a mediocre to mid episode. Uh of course my biggest gripe is we're denied that Jedi Wookiee battle showdown. <laughs> yeah. He dies off screen. I mean as soon as she walked in his little compound and I saw him sitting there at that desk and he, I was like, he's dead. Yeah he's, he's there's no way he's yeah. working on something or looking yeah. at a screen. He's already dead. Yeah. So we get denied that, but it's just, you know, almost this drop of a hat, you know, May's like, hey, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, again, it's, it's just, just just to serve. There's no one's characters make sense. Their actions don't make any sense. Yeah. There's, who are we supposed to root for in this show? Who's Who are we supposed to like? Yeah. Who are we supposed to worry what happens? I don't give a fuck what happens to OSHA. <laughs> I wish everyone was dead. <laughs> I wish everyone was dead. Right. Like, OSHA I don't care about. I don't care about May. I don't really care about Soul at this point. Like, his character is also kind of being assassinated because he's yeah. becoming more and more of a dumbass as things go on. Progress. All the other Jedi Padawans, they're all these, like, of course, that's the big complaint about Jedis is that they're just these stoic space cult monks or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So we don't really care about any of them. We don't give, again, Yord is basically furniture. Yeah. Jackie doesn't really have much of a personality. I just kind of like her because I like Daphne Keene. But right. Uh, the master's going to be revealed, and maybe his turn l- we'll talk about in episode five. But who am I supposed to care about, Todd? That's it. I never thought about that, but it's a good mean, point. Who, who, who are we pulling for? No, here? I'm not pulling for. <laughs> I'm pulling for a meteor to hit. Right. And just completely wipe <laughs> out. Obliteration of yeah, all. Yeah, exactly. All right, on to episode five, Todd. So, uh, oh, I didn't get my review. It's a four. <laughs> I got very much ahead of myself. It's a four. I agree with you, Todd. It's mediocre. We don't get the Wookiee showdown. We get uh, we get cock teased for that for a while. We don't get that at all. Yeah. He's just dead off screen. Lots of bad characterization. May's turn to the good again, apparently, from, from being dark side to now light side, too quick. Doesn't make sense in the context Not of it. True, yeah. Just seems like again. Well, we've painted ourselves in the corner. What are we going to do here? Let's have. Let's just let's, let's rotate these twins around. Yeah, and try to make it. People think we're clever, but we're not because no one cares about these characters because they're all written uh, so dumb and yeah. so poorly. Yeah. So it's a four. Now on to episode five, Todd. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we get, yeah, a, yes, my little Ren, he's here. He's, he, he's yes. here, Todd. He's here. Surprise, surprise. As we said, it's Quamir. It's, yes. He's jacked. He's got, he, he takes off his cloak here. He's got muscles on muscles. Did you like that, Todd? Uh, did, uh, no. I'm, did you? <laughs> Did you like those sinewy arms, Todd? I mean, it's okay the guy's jacked. The very know? vascular arms, It Todd. didn't move me. It anyway. didn't move you personally. <laughs> um, this episode is mostly, it's mostly action. Which is why yeah. it's my personal favorite right. one I've seen so far. Yeah, and I think the discourse <laughs> around this series, I think everyone so far has agreed if there is a quote-unquote best and again, I say best. It's like pick the most appetizing dog turd out of the <laughs> right. yard that you would 
if you had to eat one. Right. This is that dog turd. Okay. This is that appetizing piece of dog shit. If yes. you had to make me choose one out of the yard that okay. I wanted to eat. Yeah. Yeah. It's maybe a little drier. You know, it's kind of like eating like maybe like powder, hopefully. Maybe it's turned white. It's already, already. turned chalky. Yeah. It's all chalky. It's not fresh. You know, yeah. it's not fresh at all. But, okay. you know, it's still. Yeah. It's, I think everyone kind of agrees this is because it's so action heavy yeah. and because there's a lot of character deaths and stuff uh, here. I think that everybody agrees that it's the best of the worst so far. Um, tell us some of the things that went down in this episode, some of the things that you liked about it overall that made it the best quote unquote episode uh, for you. I mean, just it's, it's a very action oriented. I mean, I don't, I don't think every episode has to be this balls to the wall action, but right. you, I think you, you kind of need an episode like this or, or more scenes like this. Uh, it was just like Jedi slaughter, man. And then uh, uh, I thought I like Jackie versus uh, May. I thought that was a good kind of side fight. Right. I thought uh, Smilo Ren versus everybody else. You know, he kind of sets up as a major player here. I thought he, you know, as far as the way he executes himself, as far as his, you know, his battle. Uh, you know, form and stuff like that. I thought that was good. Yeah, I mean, the choreography and stuff's good. I mean, you get some cool kills. He kills some of the, like, the Jedi red shirts. He, like, stabs one of them and then, like, force pulls. The other one onto the lightsaber. Onto the yeah. lightsaber, yeah. Awesome. yeah. I mean, there's there's some good stuff there. You know, there's, like, some decapitations where you do the Disney cutaway from the decapitations and yeah. stuff because, you know, it's it's Disney+. Plus. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it's 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 fairly solid. Like, it's, I guess they, they, they saved their episode four Wookiee fight budget for this, I guess, to have right. some kind of fight here. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's it's good. I mean, like, the major deaths you get besides the away team, you do get Jakey's death. Jakey dies. We see that the master has some type of modular type lightsaber. He's got, like, a little mini saber. Oh, yeah, He can just yeah. pull it out and, like, tee, 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 tee. <laughs> and just, <laughs> just pepper you up real good, right. you know? <laughs> kind of like a shank or a shield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's got, like, a modular lightsaber like that. So we do lose Jakey unfortunately, and a, and a bunch of other kind of Jedis. Uh, something to note, too, about the Master and, and Smilo Ren here. He's got a, a helmet. His helmet is its not just for show. It's apparently made of cortosis, which is some kind of material that can withstand lightsaber strikes. I think it seems like he has a helmet made of it and maybe even some, like, gauntlets or, like, gloves or something made of it as well because we see him, like, headbutt a few lightsabers yeah. and, like, cut them off and things like that throughout the episode. Apparently, apparently the helmet's like a Magneto helmet too. Because it kind of blocks out Jedi mind tricks or yeah, mind probes. You, yeah, you can't you can't really be probed while you had it on. You can't have your mind read Stealing too much. Stealing from the X-Men. <laughs> 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 um, we also lose Yord. Yord. Yes, everyone's favorite character. Is gone. Is, <laughs> everyone's favorite really depthful character of Yord <laughs> is gone. He's out of here. He gets his arm broken and his neck snapped i guess is that technically killing a jedi without a weapon i guess it would be right i guess that would be that's yeah. why he's the master todd ah. yeah, that's why he's <laughs> that's, that's why he's the master um how did all these deaths sit with you how did all the jackie your the, the red shirts how did it all sit with you? i mean it all kind of came so fast because you <laughs> you went with pretty much nothing to like you know it's, it's like we're, we're stacking up bodies right here. right yeah but i mean you know, however this is going to play out, you're setting up, you know, this master as, you know, he's a force to be reckoned with. He can just kind of plow through these guys. I mean, sure, I mean, Jackie was killed by May, but everybody else was pretty much, I would say, you know, a Jedi master possibly. Jackie got killed. She got killed by the master. Oh, that's right. My bad. She had yeah. to fight with May, but she got killed by the master. Yeah, because May just kind of runs away. Right. She's trying to get away from the master. He's, like, chasing her through the most of the episode. That's right, yeah. Soul's kind of in and out of the fight a little yeah. bit. They'll fight a little bit, and then he'll knock him away or whatever yeah. and run away from him. And Osha, Osha and Yord for most of the episode, he's trying to like take her back to the to ship. To the ship. Because she until didn't want she's her like, out of there. Nah, yeah. I'm not going to the ship and turn around. And that's what gets Yord killed, basically. My apologies. As we said, it's been a week <laughs> since we saw these three. But yeah. <laughs> right, Todd. <time. laughs> yeah. You, she died at the hands of the You get every detail of this okay. shit show correct. From here on know? out. Yeah. But, you know, it does set him up as, you know, this guy's a major force to be reckoned with. But, you know, then there's something that happens towards the end. It's like, eh, is this guy really that powerful? And he's, he's going to get towed off by these, like, you know, moths. <laughs> tree tree, tree moths. roaches. Yeah. <laughs> tree roaches. So, you know, they kind of contradict themselves. You know, he's he's yeah. doing all this stuff, and he's like this big badass, but then he gets towed off by a bunch of tree it, moths. It's very weird way he to write He kind of contradicts. Him. Yeah, to, to write him out. Uh, look, before we get to the tree moths, one thing I want to put in there is uh, he does tell 
whole, I think it's soul that he does tell, like he says, like a Jedi like you may call me a Seeth or may call me Seeth. And you're like, hmm, hmm. I still don't think you're a Seeth. Right. There's a lot of theories about him. And I, I assume that they'll write this in a way that he's not really a Seeth. He's just uh, an approximation, the closest thing that in people's minds to being a Sith, but they'll say he's not really a Sith, so they don't make Ki Adi Mundi a liar. Because oh, God forbid, Ki- God forgive me, God forbid, there's some kind of canon two bit <laughs> character that no one gives a fuck about that died like a bitch in Order sixty six. Uh, let's not is a liar. Him. Yeah, let's not contradict him or, or the, the canon that we've like we've butt fucked for the last yeah. thirty years anyway. Don't contradict Penis Head Mundi. Yeah, don't contradict <laughs> Penis Head Mundi. Yeah, but he does say you know, Jedi might like you might call me Seeth. Um, you mentioned the uh, the tree moths, the tree roaches. They, they're kind of set up earlier where I think Osha tries to, like, she says she can sense them. You know, she can kind of, I don't know, feel them. Like, because they're, like, wrapped around trees right. or whatever. So they use that as, like, a kind of a deus ex machina to, like, take the master out of the picture at the end of the show is like, yeah. well, we got to write him out. We, can we just have him escape? No, let's have him carried off. Like by a know, bunch of tree moths, by <laughs> tree moths. Yeah. It's like, um, it reminds me of like, uh, the penguin, like putting his umbrella on Catwoman. Oh yeah. In yeah, Batman yeah. returns. That's what it kind of reminds me of. <laughs> yeah. Like just struggling as he's carried away by these like tree. She right. uses pip. Doesn't she? Doesn't she use the light? She kind of sacrifices pip. Turns on a light on yeah. him or something and throws it. Yeah. He's like a mag light flashlight yeah. too. And he's like, <laughs> I could do everything droid and like in Star Wars. Yeah, and then he kind of gets carried off by like tree moss. And him and Soul have a few good, you know, back and forth. And they seem like they're pretty evenly matched. It sets up Soul as a pretty competent fighter and things right. like that. And you kind of see him, which is, I think, something with a Soul character kind of wrestling with. He's not the most strict when it comes to the rules of being a Jedi. He seems to be pretty willy nilly. He seems to be pretty um, a pretty emotional guy. Oh yeah. When it comes to his characterization, so we see we see that as well. One other thing here, we uh, we see we get Osha. She stops Soul from actually from killing Smiler in at one point. Yes. Why? <laughs> Nobody. Wow. She's not a Jedi. What the fuck does she Why care? Why would she care? Yeah. Like she she stops him for no reason just because the show had three more episodes. Apparently after this. she she should know this guy's in control of her sister at this point, or she still would think that. So I stop that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like this this dude is like he's manipulated your sister potentially. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what you believe. He's killed like six of your friends and is. You know, could possibly kill your your master, your old Jedi master. Like, why not let him slice his head off? I think it's because right here they're already starting to insert that personality, unnecessary personality yeah. switch. That why? That's that's <laughs> a, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Uh, we get May and Osha. They're reunited, and it feels so bad, Todd. <laughs> if you're a viewer, right? I, I wrote here the uh, the only thing worse than watching a man Stanberg act with other actors is watching her act with herself. <laughs> It's terrible. Wow. I do not think she's a very good actress. And I, I was first yeah. saying that it was the material, but I think it's about 60-40. I think it's 60% the material. I think it's her. 40%. I don't think this is your genre, Amanda. Okay. I don't think this is your show. You may be good in other things. I don't know. Right. But this... Space operas ain't your jam, Space. Maybe. Yeah, this is not your bag, baby. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I just... I don't... I do not... Anytime she's on screen and her acting... I do not buy it. I do not think it's good. Yep. Call me a racist. <laughs> uh, get those comments ready. Oh, Lord. Get them ready. We're back. <laughs> Can't <laughs> wait to get a racist comment, Todd. Uh, at the end of the show, uh, somebody gets a haircut, Todd. Who gets who gets a haircut and Ray leaves actually with actually does her bangs. <laughs> yes. She takes a light. She gives herself yeah. a lightsaber haircut, and she uh, she knocks out uh, Osha with the stun gun, right? Right, yep. And then she does a clothes swap. She gives herself a lightsaber haircut, and she's the one le- that leaves with Soul, and she leaves her sister to basically, well, for all she knows, die on that planet. That's true. Yeah. I mean, there's tree roaches. Anything could. Anything could have got a hold. Anything over. could eat that bitch. If only we were so lucky, though. <laughs> and also, who finds Pip at the end of this episode? Oh, it was uh, the little space gopher thing. Yes, yeah, space yeah. gopher. <laughs> Basil. Yes. Yes, Basil. Basil exposition. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, Todd. Uh, episode five. Enough, enough said about this. One. Uh, what do you uh, think, review score wise, and final thoughts for episode five of the Acolyte? You know, I was torn here, but I, I'm actually 
just based on this being, you know, the best episode I've seen so far, I want to kind of give credit where credit's due. I'm going to I'm gonna bump up to a five here. A five? I'm going to say this was a decent episode. I think five's mediocre. Oh, it's five mediocre? Five mediocre, six is decent, seven is good. Well, we're going to go six what decent. What the fuck is wrong with you? I've been gone a while. <laughs> we have a review scale for a reason. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This was this was a decent episode okay, for so me. It's six. Numbers aside, yeah, numbers insert is, the right number here. Yeah, I'll put it down at the bottom. Obviously, of the tidy can't stay gone for three weeks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's, yeah, the sun has rotted your brain. But there there was some good things here. There are still some things that don't work. There's some things that are contradicting itself. It's still you know, still mid writing, and I think still mid acting in some in some ways. But I think like you kind of mentioned before, it's like. You know, pick your favorite poison. Pick your favorite turd. Yeah, this is my favorite one so far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a lot of. Uh, I, I'm with you too. I'm gonna give it a six, which is decent. A six. A six. <laughs> it's yeah, six decent is on our scale. Open what six? Yeah, six. Six, is, six good. is good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a six. I think it is decent. I think it is the most decent. And I think it's. Um, and it's not the it's, it's it's purely because of the action. It's purely because it's it was executed well. The action is not nothing is added to the action. There's no weight to the action. It's not because I yeah. care about your dying. I don't give a fuck. I really don't care about Jackie, even though I liked her the most, probably mm. like I because I like that actress. But there's it's not impactful at all. It's just it's just cool. It's just yeah, cool it's death. Cool. It's you cool. Know, it's cool. Because we had no, you know, personal interest in these characters. Yeah, like they can just be lambs to the slaughter is why. Right. It's not it's not interesting. It's not impactful because we care so much about these characters and what happens to them, which would have been nice to have in a better show. Yeah. A better written show. It would have been nice to actually care about Yord and feel something when he got his neck snapped other than elation. <laughs> You know, because right. that's what I feel. Right. Um, you know, for Jackie, I was like, oh, well, that sucks. But yeah. I wasn't like, oh, I'm crushed. Right. You know, I wasn't like shield reacting and just in my own home. Be like, oh, no, <laughs> Jackie. You know, it wasn't like that. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, I think the action was solid. I think, you know, anytime that you can get away from a lot of dialogue and writing in the show, you're probably you're better, you're off. better <laughs> off. Yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I give it a six as well. I think this is a, a decent episode. Uh, last one here, Todd. Episode six. What Ooh. did you think the story was in episode six? Uh, so Ocean may here do the old identical twin identity swap thing. Yeah. That old trophy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is anybody going to catch on to this shit? I was beginning to wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> yeah, we shall see. Um, I wrote another thing here in my notes that says, let me say this. I don't know what that was supposed to be. I, I'll say this again. I hate this. <laughs> I hate it. I don't know what my other note was going to be. We're just going to because I wrote these notes a week ago, and I probably had something very like insightful and and you know in depthful to say, but I just hate it. You do. <laughs> Hey, we're just going to redrop in our hate. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to read. <laughs> I'm going to double down on my hatred for this. Um, so I wrote these down as shit we need to talk about. And ah, I see that first right here. topic is OSHA wakes up on Cormier Sex Island. Sees him naked, wants to fuck him, and immediately abandons everything her character was and stood for up to this point. Thoughts? Uh, just why? I mean, I don't understand it at this point. It's like, I don't know if they're trying, like we mentioned earlier, are they trying to think they're being clever, but they're not? It's like, you know, you've established twins, you know, one's evil, one's bad, one's good. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you're going to switch them right here this close to the end? Right, without... <laughs> And it's not done in a clever way. It's yeah. not done in a competent way. It just seems to be doing it for the sake of doing it. And it's like, yeah, you don't it's, believe it's, it's it. It's just done at the drop of a hat. There's basically. no motivation behind it. It's just done to do it. There's no, if it had been written out and carefully crafted and like hints dropped about it and like you believe it and it be some type of, of, yeah. of turn that you didn't expect. We or had breadcrumbs throughout. Yeah. yeah. Nobody expected this because nobody wanted it because it doesn't make sense in the context of this show. My biggest thing about this whole, like, Cormier Sex Island and seeing him naked and him being swimming in the little <laughs> lagoon and her, like, clearly looking down at his cock and all this kind of stuff, like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that's not Star Wars. It, true. Does, that, <laughs> does any of that feel like Star Wars? None to of this. Thought? None of that rung true as Star Wars. I don't Wars, remember no. that in the original, the original trilogy. 
I, don't I remember, remember some kissing. I remember some hugging. Maybe. I remember a little incestuous kissing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah when your brother stuff, kissed a sister. Little but, stuff know. like that. I don't remember anybody looking down at anybody's cock. No, and being like, unless I miss something. Eh? <laughs> Chewbacca. <laughs> Is that, is that looking at his little red lipstick? Because I imagine he's got a. Never mind. Let's like, back on track. <laughs> We've been gone too long. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but yeah, it just that really did not feel like something. That did not feel like a Star Wars scene. And I yeah, see people online like, "Oh, show his ass and all this." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, like, this is not. And I mean, things can evolve. Things, things can be different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't always want the same things, but like this doesn't, it doesn't lend itself to the spirit of it. You could have done this a lot better without the overt sexualization. Yeah. I just thought about what if it was different? What if Quamir was a woman and Osha was a man? What would people say about it then in this uh, day and time? Todd? It would be ripped to shreds. And be like, <laughs> nice, nice tits, you know, coming out of the lagoon or whatever. Right, like right. people would rip it to shreds, yeah. but like we can sexualize this dude because it's different and nobody cares about the sexualization of me and Todd. Here's my soapbox <laughs> for this episode. The more you know, Todd. <laughs> no, I mean, I just thought about it in that re- that regard. If it was, if you gender swap these roles, people mm-hmm. would not have had the same reaction. I can guarantee it. They, they would have called this show out for being like sexist and like yeah. over sexualizing right. the character, mm-hmm. and like it just doesn't feel like Star Wars. It's not a Star Wars thing to watch some dude swim around naked in a lagoon. Yeah, and I then, mean, I agree with you. Like I just, I don't know. Yeah. It just, it bugs me from that standpoint of like. You could have done this and set up their their chemistry or lack thereof is what they have no chemistry. But you could have set up if they had this kind of will they won't they kind of thing going mm-hmm. on. They both have a desire for each other. You could have done that. I mean, because you kind of do that through the episode when they're in their little Cormier sex cave and stuff. And right, like, right. He's working away and she's talking about his scars and all this kind of stuff. Like you could have, you could still have that. Like you didn't, you, did you need the unnecessary lagoon cock scene? That's <laughs> what I'll call it. In a like, Disney like, property, no less. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. Like, I wrote down here, this is the worst piece of Star Wars media since the sequel trilogy, which is the worst piece of Star Wars media since the prequel trilogy, which was the worst piece of Star Wars media since Return of the Jedi. Wow. <laughs> to me, I really loathe this episode. I think this is the one I hate the most out of this entire series. Okay. I don't know how other people feel yeah. about it, but like, I mean, do you even buy the sudden attraction to Komir? I mean, this guy... He murdered all her friends. He almost killed her her master. He murdered her friends that she used to be in Jedi training with. She had some little connection with Jackie. They had a couple conversations or whatever. Nobody yeah. has an actual character in this story. But yeah. I'm like, do you buy this sudden attraction to Komir? No. I mean, this is the guy that basically has been, uh, you know, holding your sister, you know, having, you know, indoctrinated her and training her in to be this, you know, killer, assassin. Mm-hmm. You know, after she found out she's still alive, you know, why, why would you, inst- just because he's swimming naked? <laughs> yeah, because he's hot. Because yeah. you find him attractive. That's the level of writing you get. Like, there's no, and they barely mention that he killed her friends or any of the stuff that happened in the previous episode. She's yeah. just so enamored with him and how he looks physically and his tragic backstory. Like, she's just, like, completely character assassinates whatever little bit of character that yeah. she had and makes her seem like a horny teenager. That's like, oh, okay, you're hot. You're cool and mysterious and hot. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll hang around in your <laughs> your cave, Todd, you know? You had almost been better served. It would still kind of run dumb to me, but if you maybe had set up that this was some kind of power he had that he could, you know, influence women or other species. Right. I, won't, I won't just say women. I apologize. <laughs> other species. What kind of and, species, Todd? <laughs> those little rock things? Yeah, Kid Addy Moondies, Space get it on, Gophers. Did he get it on with them little rock <laughs> things? If he could perhaps, you know, have, you know, sway over you right. know, whatever he Part wanted. Part of the, the manipulation of the, yeah. dark, the allure of the dark Other than her just is... like seeing him swimming in a, you know, in a pool right. and then seeing his scars and like, ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm sorry. It's just his natural musk, Todd, <laughs> that she's attracted to. He's got a natural odor. He's got odor. some kind of Sith pheromone I that we, we don't know about that'll be revealed. Maybe it is revealed that he's got uh, some kind of uh, Sith 
the lure power. Could be I mean, they just, they just make new powers up sometimes for like, you know, like force heal and all this stuff. That's so true. Yeah, that's true. It's, I don't know if, you know, force allure I'm casting <laughs> on OSHA in this, in this, yeah, in this cave. It's like, you know, he's, he's got that vampire seduction thing or whatever, apparently. But I just, I don't buy it. Yeah, I'm good. I don't I'm buy with the, you. I don't buy pivoting May to potentially the good side and pivoting OSHA to the bad side. And again, I don't, the acting here by Amanda Stanberg, I, I hate to just keep harping on it, but like that part where like she's, she takes his lightsaber and she, what does she say? She's like, I can't even remember. She yells something at him. I forget. It's been a week. Right. And it's like, I'm like, oh, this is so, the, the delivery on it's just like so cringe. cringe. Everything about this episode is just pure cringe in my eyes. Um, Back with Soul, so he's he's taken un we think unbeknownst to him he's he's taken May aboard his ship, posing as OSHA. They're uh, kind of heading back through space, hyperspace. For whatever reasons, the ship's having all kinds of problems. Todd, <laughs> communications down, the power's going in and right. out. The ship was fine before; nothing's yeah. happened to it. Do you buy all the the problems with the power and communication? Does that seem like something that you can buy, or does it seem like the writers are just like, "Hey, how do we keep this guy from uh, contacting anybody in the Jedi Council and doing anything?" Yeah, it's 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 to serve that kind of purpose, and maybe even to kind of lend more to like you know, let's kind of drag out this, you know, May is impersonating as Osha, and I'm like, you know, she can fix it with Pip, because I think Pip shows back up. Don't that little space gopher fix it? Or yeah. She fixes it, or was it the gopher that fixes it? I think, I don't know, she gets it somehow. The gopher yeah. finds it. Yeah, the gopher found it. Yeah, and, and she's, because there's a scene where, like, because he, the gopher's on the ship, and he's like, this, this bitch ain't right. Yeah, because he was trained to find her. To find and her. And obviously he's like... Yeah. That's you, ain't That's it? You. That's yeah. you. That's you. <laughs> That's not you. Not yeah. OSHA. This is May. So he's because there's a scene where like uh, she goes to like try to fix the power or something, and Basil like stomps on her foot, and then she gets sprayed with some black gunk in her face. Yeah, like at, straight out of Home Alone. Right, like, right. It's just so stupid yeah. and cringe. Like she's just like oh. She's like sprayed like some kind of home alone gag with some like it's like something out of the three stooges or something, Todd. Like what the fuck are we doing? And then the master he kind of picked up fairly quick that, you know, that was OSHA. That wasn't May anymore. But right. I was being like, when the fuck is Saul gonna catch on here? Because it took him a little bit. And I yeah. you know, I was like, What the hell? <laughs> yeah, he uh he eventually ends up stunning her. She tries to contact somebody, and I don't even know what she was doing. Like, was she gonna try to contact somebody as May or as OSHA? Yeah. Either way, it doesn't make any sense. Who are you calling, bitch? <laughs> For what reason? Right. Like, who's gonna help you? Like what why did you think you needed help or anything? I don't understand. But but Soul, he he stuns her with the the sun gun, then ties her down to the bed and he's like, Oh, you're gonna listen to what I have to say, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like I here we go, like setting up sixteen years ago. You're gonna you're gonna finally learn about what actually happened sixteen years yeah. ago and what went down and I've been waiting I got a lot of things to say to you, lady. I'm gonna tell you <laughs> finally what actually went down to the le the lesbian witch coven. <laughs> you're gonna hear all about it in the next episode. In the next episode. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Yeah, and that's where we're left off at the end of uh episode six, basically. Like do, do you think Cormier is actually a Sith Todd? What What's your thoughts there? Uh, do you I think know. he's a Sith, and do you think it's kind of hinted at that because we see uh, Vernestra mm -hmm. and she takes some other random Jedi's to like follow Soul and his team after they he does get a message out and he they basically hear my team's been completely murdered. Right. So Vernestra takes like a team there. Did you like that little interaction she keeps having with that overbearing guy? Not really. Where he's like, you know you get sick in hyperspace. And she's like, <laughs> God. She's like, I don't get sick. I just don't like it. And she kind of walks away. She's like, <laughs> he's like, like wow. it goes on for like five minutes. It's, like, it was kind of dumb. Like, he's just like this overbearing, like, Jedi guy. That Overprotective. Just, yeah, he's like something. playing like some kind of half ass butler, yeah. like almost. Like, you know, sir, you know. Like this. <laughs> I'm like, I, it just it bugged the shit Did out of me. Did you pack your extra tunic? Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. <laughs> Do you have your warm robes? It could get cold out there, Vernestra. Like, and it's just like yeah. it's so overbearing and it's just so annoying. Uh but yeah, it, we set up uh we see she's got a uh not just a purple lightsaber, a purple lightsaber whip. Oh. Our first time, and it's set up 
too with Quamir that he uh, has like a scar from. He it doesn't actually confirm that his Jedi master gave him the scar. He kind of leaves it open ended, like to kind of I think let the audience believe that his master did that to him. But do you think he's a Sith, and do you think Vernestra actually gave him the scar? Do you think he was her Padawan at one point? I think the way this this writing is going, that Brea probably he was <laughs> he was her former Padawan. That scar is from her whip. Yeah. But now whether he's a Sith or not, I don't really know. I don't know if he's going to wind up being some kind of thing that maybe maybe leads to the creation of the Sith. Maybe he's like this kind of hybrid kind of you know. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> I'm not really sold that he's 100 percent Sith yet. I don't know. Yeah, I would say that they're going to write it where he's not Sith. I'm going to say he's just. He's a fallen Jedi that's kind of, you know, that's taking on some dark side like traits. Right. And they'll, I've heard some people theorize that it'd be cool at the end of the show if like he's taken out by an actual Sith that's like, you know, you've you've exposed us for too long or something like yeah. that. And like, you know, it's like Plagueis or something like that. Yeah. Will the show ruin Plagueis as well? Oh my God. Stay tuned. Stay, <laughs> Stay tuned and find out. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, my last couple notes here I had is like, this show continues to make you really hate the Jedi. Just the competence, the stoicism, the weird monk kind of, stuff it's just all all the worst problems of the jedi are just kind of exacerbated by the show and that's probably mostly the point i get it but like mm-hmm. uh, some of the the writing and some of the stuff that's not intended makes you hate the jedi even more true in, in my opinion um last shot of the show last things like come here's like hey put on the helmet bitch <laughs> <laughs> and so she puts on the helmet, and we get this like Halloween 1978 Michael Myers breathing oh, helmet yeah. thing, and like, like you, like how does he do anything in that helmet? The the vision, you the got narrow it's vision. Like, it's a couple of small, slits. yeah. It's just like a slit to view out of. How is he able to do anything? It's all force. But uh, that that last shot of her with that oversized helmet, comedy gold. <laughs> Comedy gold thought. You can't write better comedy than just her sitting there, this like small girl with this comically oversized Smiler Wren helmet on. Completely cringe. Completely um, comedy gold thought. Anything else to say about six before reviews? No. <laughs> Uh, give us your review score and final thoughts for Acolyte Episode 6, Todd. I'm dipping that down to a four. Yeah. I got it right this time, which is mediocre. I just think after, you know, the, the tick up we have in five, I just think they don't really, they don't take that and run with it here. I don't know if it was much to run with, because as we said, there's no emotion to those deaths, because at this point, I didn't, this is my personal opinion, I don't have any attachment to any of these characters. There's yep. nobody I'm rooting for. I don't even know who to root for. Yeah. I don't at this point, you know, is is Osha fallen? Is she is she going to the dark side? Is is May coming up to the light side? Yeah. Is she the hero? What what the yeah. fuck are we doing? Yeah, we don't know. The show doesn't know. They yeah. didn't know. It'll have some type of conclusion. It'll be terrible. And Saul, which was my personal favorite character, he's just kind of the more we go along, like some kind of like bumbler almost in a way yeah and i don't it's just yeah his character assassination gets i think completed in the episode seven which we'll talk about in the next video yeah like i think again he he started off kind of strong but like yeah i don't know what they're doing with his character who are we supposed to like we know there's no sub characters that we like there's no supporting characters that we like the ones that were there they're now dead we didn't care about them before we don't. I don't really care about. I don't care about OSHA. I don't care about May. If you're expecting me to like now, I didn't care about them before. Now you're trying to make me care about them in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like right. you're wanting me to like I, characters I didn't like when they were good and evil. Now you want me to pivot and like them when they're evil and good. Mm-hmm. Like doesn't work. Quamir is the most interesting aspect of the show. The master is the most interesting aspect of the show. Yeah. Um, but then there's also weird cringe stuff with him, mm-hmm. with all the, 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 the sex lagoon and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And like him and Osha having this like forced romantic relationship that I don't really buy because she, you would not, not this quickly would she, I think, fall for some pseudo Sith that just murdered half of her friends and all the stuff and had been manipulating and 
doing God knows what as far as she knows to her sister for for years at this point and turned her sister down this path that maybe she was already on but just helped her and now she's going to turn into the next acolyte potentially yeah will she come back to the light won't she that's what this that's what the show now is trying to set up for me to care about and I don't give a fuck yeah I'm just here because I got to see it through <laughs> how bad does it get it's like this is one and I don't know how the uh, the making of process of this, and I don't care to know. I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> they with don't you. know the making yeah, of process. But of it this, just seems to me this is like one of those shows where they just went like, "I want we're going we're going we want this. I want this. I want this kind of character. This kind of character. Right. This 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 right. story. Well, we'll, we'll figure we'll that out as in. we go. But yeah. I want all these boxes checked. It has to be this 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 this, right. and we'll worry about that when we get yeah, to it. We'll fill in the rest. Well, you've got to it, and you fucked it up. Yeah, like we, <laughs> we've drawn a rectangle on a piece of paper, and we're like, well, what goes in the rectangle? It's like we'll worry about that later. Yeah, but here's where the edges are of the story, and we don't know how we're going to fill it in. And and no, one, no one knows. And you're you, you're doing your actors and your everybody on the show a disservice because you you don't have anything worth the, I don't think worth their time or our time to give them to do that's just no, my opinion no no not at all there's nothing worth in the show like i said i'm just continuing to watch it and we're continuing to talk about it but, you know we're not engagement farming with the show i yeah. don't give a fuck about we're that. walking through broken glass for yeah you folks. it's just because like <laughs> i just i'm gonna see it through and like you know put out the word about it you know there's a lot more people with a lot bigger platforms than us that will tell you that the show is bad now some of them go a little too far into why it's bad for like the wrong reasons mm -hmm. i feel like you know for us we're just focusing on the fact of like it's just terribly written and mostly poorly acted yeah but the writing and the direction and the the gross misuse of funds yeah that i still don't understand where the money went where is the money be? Somebody look at the water. Is Kathleen Kennedy got a new yacht? Yeah, but somebody. Uh, somebody. Bob Iger got a yacht. Somebody. <laughs> like, I mean, he's, he got like a super yacht now. Something. Like, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't get it. Like, for me, I think, again, this is probably the episode that I dislike the most because, like, the forced Quimir OSHA stuff and the turn and the sex island and the, the lagoon, cock lagoon and all that. <laughs> like, I just, I, I'm still going to say three. I'm still going to say bad. I'm still reserving my twos for stuff like Rebel Moon. Uh, so I'm going to still say three. This is just, a, this is a very bad show and a very bad episode. And gotcha. I, I don't think it's going to get any better. I think we peaked with the action episode. We got in episode five, and I think it's going to be more downhill from here. I fear you we, may be right. As we get into <laughs> for episode seven. Uh, I think we'll call it the, a wrap for this episode, Todd. Sounds Another good. Another one in the bag. We're back. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email or get in touch with us on social media. Tile Capes will return. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys.